The Kambini Boys. The Kambini Boys. The Kambini. The Kambini. The Kambini. The Kambini Boys. Hey, Mike. Hey, Matt. How's it going? Doing well. Uh, early here, Saturday morning. Just, uh, just washed down a large Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee. Got my Red Sox hat on, so I'm doing a full Massachusetts morning here and feeling great. <laughs> How are things over in Japan? Yeah, things are good. I'm um, as for me, you know, it's evening time here, here so I've got a, uh, I've got a, um, I got a Sapporo. Mm. As you see, this is the uh, the black label. A little bit different can than in the states, um, but this is the the classic. It's one Sapporo. of the great cans out there. Yeah, no, this is what design is all about right there. Um, yeah, and I'm glad to see you got the hat on. This uh, last week on the YouTube channel, we had a comment from Uncle Andy, and he said, which one is Matt? So, oh. you know, this time I think it's, uh, it's easy to differentiate us. We got a guy from Boston, or not from Boston, but uh, from Massachusetts right here. You got me here in the background. I got, you know, the... Japanese style room so uh you know for anyone who was wondering yeah all right Mike so uh we got a lot to talk about today as usual so what do you yeah. say we jump right in all right so uh leading off as always Matt um we're looking at the uh the chicky wars mm -hmm. and this week we are looking at Lawson um let me just go ahead and throw this thing up on the screen. This week, Lawson is coming out. Ooh. It looks like number 202 with the Karage-kun. This is the Benny Shoga, mm. the uh, pickled, gar uh, pickled uh, ginger mm -hmm. flavored Karage-kun. Uh, as you can see here in the background, our listeners probably know this. It's sometimes... Uh, you find it at um, Japanese restaurants. Uh, Matt, what is your uh, feeling on this uh, latest entry into the uh, Karage-kun repertoire? Well, actually, like you said there, Mike, I think most folks from the United States or just outside of Japan will be familiar with this flavor um, because it's commonly served, of course, alongside things like uh, sushi, mm -hmm. thinly sliced pickled ginger. Uh, maybe not always in this red um color right but it's pickled ginger and so i think this will give folks a good understanding of how far lawson is willing to go with their karage kun flavors here pickled ginger and fried chicken you wouldn't normally consider mashing those two things up but uh you know in terms of sort of wacky ideas on the karage kun totem pole this is probably near the bottom nowhere near of course black hole flavor pop group flavors things like that <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think this will resonate with uh, our listeners and people looking at the screen here. Yeah, for sure. I personally, I don't know if I would enjoy this flavor. It does sound, I could see it going either way. And in one sense, the, the ginger could be quite refreshing and cut the richness of the fried chicken. On sure. the other hand, it sounds kind of gross. So I'm not sure. I'm not <laughs> sure about it, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think it'll really depend. If this is just a, a flavoring of the Benny Shoga, that'll be one thing. If it has little bits of this Ooh. red Benny Shoga in here, oh. in the Karage Kun, that could be a whole different story. So uh, yeah, we'll just have to see. But um, yeah, um, just, uh, you know, good to see uh, Karage Kun, you know, moving forward into the 200s with uh, some new flavors. Into the 200s, yeah. Known flavor number 202. <laughs> There from Lawson on the Karaege Kun front. Yeah. Um, okay, Mike. Uh, next up, we have the scoreboard. So this hey. is our weekly look at the new items coming out of the convenience. And just to give folks, uh, you know, what what's the state of play here? Uh, at Family Mart, they have fifty seven new items this week. So kind of right okay. in the wheelhouse. Lawson yep. down to twenty nine now. Um, mm. A little bit lower than normal, but still, uh, you know, sort of close to the wheelhouse. And then 7-Eleven, 129 new items out this week in the Hokuriku region of Japan, where you're based, Mike, but you said 
in the Kanto region, that's the Tokyo area, they have, what, 158 new items coming out this week? 158. I don't even know what to think about that. Um, Gosh. That's a year's that's a year's <laughs> supply for some stores, right? One hundred and fifty-eight. Uh, never. Uh... Fifty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. Gosh. Anyway, uh, as usual, we have each selected an item that mm-hmm. was appealing to us from the conveni, and so uh, let's go ahead and take a look. I'm gonna crack open uh, yours to kick things off. Mm-hmm. Let's see what you got here, Mike. This is from Family Mart. Ooh, what do you got here? Oh, yeah. This is, uh, as you can see, this is um, beef jerky. Mm. And uh, (laughs) the English says thick cut beef jerky or thick beef jerky. But as you can see, and as anyone who can read Japanese knows, this is cho. This is, yep. Atsugiri beef jerky extremely extreme thick cut beef jerky and um you know as i was talking about last week i you know i'm a guy i like chewing on things and mm. um the uh we were talking about the the tough gummies it's mm. the same with the uh with the beef jerky i don't like to like bite in there and be able to snip it off with one bite i want to you know work my way in there almost it's you know it's like a jaw exercise and i love beef jerky when I'm, if I'm having some alcohol, I love mm. to have some beef jerky right there. So this one this week is the one that uh, really stuck out to me. Um, what, what do you think about this thing? No doubt. I too love beef jerky and nothing goes better with a beer than a couple pieces of thick cut jerky. And indeed, uh, this does look like it's just a couple of pieces of yeah. thick cut jerky, two pieces in that whole bag um, for almost four bucks there so uh yeah beef jerky definitely you know it's not your it's not your uh jack links where you get a big Mm -hmm. old bag jumbo size for six bucks here you're gonna get two pieces four bucks but uh no doubt that's gonna be some premium as you say that's the cho that's what this first kanji character says here that Mm -hmm. is extreme that's big time thick cut beef jerky yeah, and I'd just like to one more comment. I'd like to say, like you're saying, only two pieces in there. So it would be really nice if we could get sort of like a, a three dimensional image to see just how thick how this, thick uh, cut. Yeah, yeah. How zoom thick in on this. the cross section there for our viewers. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, nice lead off, little appetizer from Family Mart. Okay, I'm gonna move over to what I selected out of Family Mart here. Okay. Um, what we're looking at is the yaki soba and croquette <laughs> roll. This is a sandwich. Um, So what we're looking at here is a submarine style bun. And on one half, you got the yakisoba. Again, this is a noodle dish with a sweet soy based sauce. You got two fried croquettes. That's sort of mashed potatoes with breadcrumbs uh, and then fried, deep fried. And then in between, you have the beni shoga. Hey, that ginger that we just uh, mentioned for that karage kun, separating the two, almost serving as kind of a mediator between these two radically different items, neither of which belong inside of a submarine roll. No. <laughs> and there's this sort of mysterious, I got to believe that's kind of mayonnaise um, yeah. that's dressed against just the yakisoba side. So you got these four <laughs> weird things, mayonnaise, yakisoba, croquette, pickled ginger all stuffed inside this submarine roll and then unfortunately i can't show this because family mark does automatically transition to english mm-hmm. but in the japanese description of this they use the word sando shita so they took yakisoba croquette and they sando stud which is to say they sandwiched it they turned the word sandwiched into a verb here and I got to tell you, Mike, I think that is uh, a harbinger of some nasty things to come where they're just oh. turning the word sandwich into a verb. I don't know what more combos they plan to make here, but I just I was astounded by this. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. Japanese language is um, it's powerful in the sense that once you make a verb, there's no real stopping performing that verb and so uh 
you're you're exactly right. I have no idea what we're going to be looking for in the future or looking at in the future here. Um, just in terms of this item itself, I think we both agree. You know, the yakisoba in the in the bun is not the best uh, thing. I, not even really talking about the taste, just the sort of like concept. Of concept, it. yeah. Um, and you know, right up there is the croquette. Yeah. The, you know, these are just not things that we want in a bun and. Mm -hmm. To be honest, like I just thinking about eating this just makes me tired because you're just talking about <laughs> carbohydrates stuffed with carbohydrates. The only thing, the only last thing they could put in there is maybe like some an onigiri, you know, like um. Oh yeah. I you know I'm I'm really glad you picked this one up, um, but um, yeah, in terms of whether I'd want it, I'm gonna have to say no. That's a pass. I agree on that. <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess how about we head over to Lawson here, Mike? You've got something picked out. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see what it is. Holy moly! Mm -hmm. All right, this is a little bit of follow up from uh, last week. We were talking about the man <laughs> section, otherwise known as the Nikuman section. Um, oh and right now, so the Nikuman is just the the sort of pork steamed bun. And sometimes you get the, uh, you know, the pizza man, which has some cheese. Right here, what we've got, we've got the cheese nikuman. And yeah, thank you for zooming in on that. As you can see, oh man. Again, like I often say this, but how could this not be good? I mean, this is, um, as opposed to the chickies, where we've had some problems with getting cheese in there, I don't think that the, the nikuman suffers from the same potential problem. Mm. I mean, anything you put in there is great. And, you know, what better combo than cheese and pork? Well, uh, not only that, in the description here, it says five kinds of cheese blended together. So this, this guy here, this, this, this ripple of cheese, that's five different cheeses somehow. Um, and yeah, stuffed inside the Nikuman, I like it. Uh, the Nikuman bun, this is a steam bun, it's very light. And mm. so when you're going to, you know, smash together pork and five types of cheese, you know, you're playing with fire there on the richness scale. But that steam bun is so light and fluffy that I'm not worried about that at all. I think you bite into that and um, my goodness, you know, you're floating on air. Very mm. different from the uh, submarine mayonnaise croquette yakisoba <laughs> roll. No risk of, of, you know, sort of eating a lead balloon here, although it may look like that's what you're about to eat. This is a fantastic choice, Mike. And again, Nikuman can't go wrong, but uh, mm. five cheese, Nikuman, my goodness, that is outstanding. Yeah, yeah. And continuing the trend of uh, multiple cheeses, it's good to see. And um, yeah, so uh, yeah, excited about this one. All right, next up uh, from Lawson, what I picked this week was this guy here. Oh, the Irokodo Sushi Assortment here. Um, this is out of Lawson. Mike, I think this is just a perfect demonstration of the high class work coming out of Lawson. Mm. You could serve this at any American sushi bar and pass it off as a $30 omakase six core sushi thing. In fact, a new sushi joint opened up recently down the street from me. They're serving 60 to $80 omakase takeout sushi right now. I am sure this could go toe to toe with what they're pumping out there. Six distinct types. You got shrimp, you got your uh, salmon, and uh, mm. fish row, you got uh, egg and crab. I mean, just a fantastic, mm. of uh, outstanding assortment of sushi here. And all for uh, four bucks. So, Jeez. Gosh, I have a hard time. I think this is one of the best looking convenient items I've ever seen. Yeah, no, I agree. This is, um, I feel like you can, you can rate a, a, a convenient item in terms of the effort put into it by the um, number of ingredients in like unique ingredients and mm -hmm. just look at this i mean there's let's see one two three four five i mean there's probably all in all all said and done you know 12 to 15 different unique ingredients in there 
And yeah, like you said, I mean, this would not, I would not be surprised at my, my and I actually went to lunch today mm-hmm. and there was a restaurant that was selling something that looked very similar to this. And yep. um, yeah, this is beautiful. What an item. Um, Lawson more and more. We've been talking about it. They are really they're playing in a different league. They're uh, really stepping it up. Wow. Every week I feel a little bit worse about not paying more attention to Lawson in the five years I lived in Japan. And uh, <laughs> more evidence of that here. All right. Let's say we head over to the opposite of Lawson, which is the um, dumpster that is 7-Eleven here. <laughs> what do you got here, Mike? Ta- oh, unexpected. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, this is also a follow-up as well. Um As you'll remember from last week, (laughs) I introduced a tough gummy item with a unique flavor of the fermented milk drink flavor tough gummy. Well, here we go. What we've got here, Gari Gari Kun, Mm. one of the most legendary (laughs) ice creams in Japan. It's just ice on a stick with flavor inside. It's similar to like, it's on the level of like those, you know, I'm sure everyone's had them um, who's lived in the States, the, the push-up pops. Oh, um, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, the push-up pops or something like that. Uh, they're just all over the place. I mean, this is a classic item. But mm. here again, we're seeing the fermented milk drink flavor. And actually looking at this item, one thing that I kind of thought is, Fermented milk drink? Are they talking about Yakuruto? Yeah, you got the little Yakuruto on the package here. Yeah. So, okay, and now it kind of made sense. So that's the flavor that they're talking about. Okay, but still, I am, um, as you can see, this picture as well is just, uh, this guy is just gulping down. Can't get enough of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, I was struck by the same thing there. On on the package, you have an uh, some a couple of drawings of Yakuruto, which is the famous yogurt drink that comes in a tiny bottle. Um, it's a mysterious company; they must make billions of dollars a year, <laughs> all from this single yogurt drink. They own a baseball team. Yeah, it's sort of like uh, the Mitsubishi of. Uh, mysterious yogurt beverages in terms of their size and influence on the Japanese economy. Yeah. But yeah, that's that that could be what this is, in which case I do love a Yakuruto little that's beverage great. there. And so if that's what this is, I'm all down for eating a little fermented milk ice cream bar there. Mm-hmm. Um, I could see yeah. myself actually looking like this little guy there, just, just chugging it um, <laughs> until uh, my gut is sparkly clean. Yeah, yeah, no, this definitely, um, once I realized what that flavor was last week, then I thought, okay, well, maybe I could see myself, you know, going for that a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, yeah, I thought this is an interesting follow up and also a, a good chance to talk a little bit more about Gadi Gadi Kun. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's my choice from 7 Eleven. All right, to wrap things up here, uh, my choice from 7 Eleven is a blueberry and whipped cream sandwich. But Mike, these aren't just Mm. any blueberries. These are blueberries from the Noto. Yeah, so uh, a little backstory here. There is a peninsula that sticks out into the Japan Sea called the Noto Peninsula. And Mm. Mike, you lived at the very tip of that peninsula for a year in a town called Suzu. I lived not far from Suzu, just about 40 minutes south in a town called Ukawa. Uh, And Noto is famous for a number of things, but one of them is blueberries. They have blueberries that are famous throughout Japan. And these are Noto produced blueberries Mm. into this whipped cream, one of these dessert sandwiches that, again, I'm pretty gross, but the Noto blueberries really struck me. And what what I'm really interested in this is a Japan-wide release here. And so we're talking about probably 15,000, 20,000 7-Elevens. There aren't many people in the Noto. Mm-hmm. I got to believe they got, they got the whole peninsula just working day and night 
<laughs> harvesting these blueberries. You know, you got about an, a small army of 80 year old farmers, tiny little pickup trucks blocking all traffic, just shipping these blueberries out as fast as they can pick them. Uh, but yeah, I can't believe this must be an all hands on deck effort in the note dough just to keep up with uh, fulfilling demand for these 7-Eleven dessert whipped cream sandwiches here. Wow. Yes, you're exactly right. I mean, because what do you think in, in one of those sandwiches? I mean, there's probably got to be 20, 30, 40 blueberries, Absolutely. you know, mashed up to make this. Um, and like you said, not many people in the Noto and only one way into the Noto. Well, there's also an airport, but um, really there's just the one highway. So like you said, I imagine that highway is going to be just full of, you know, tractor trailers carrying blueberries. Um, yeah, as we've talked before, I'm not a huge fan. I know you're not either of the, the sweet sandwiches, mm. um, but I got to say, like you said, we've got, uh, we have pride in the Noto. And so um, I'm happy to see them making a nationwide entrance. Outstanding. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so that wraps up the scoreboard and our look <clears throat> at new items uh, for the week here. Mm -hmm. And All uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this week, we are taking a look at something that we haven't talked about much on the podcast, Can't believe we podcast yet, but something that is fairly well known outside of Japan as well. And I'm talking about the bento. Mm -hmm. Now, what's a bento? A bento is a lunch box. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, um, bento is can literally be like a lunch that um, that you it's like a prepared lunch, I guess is what you'd say, mm. or a prepared meal that you can take with you. So like a, a yeah, like a lunch box. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I gotta say, bentos are, are some of the best um, things in Japan. I mean, like I was saying, like the, they're, they're not just, um, it's, it's a little hard to, to imagine them, but um, like the level of bento uh, creation is is something like you've never seen there's some there's people who are professional bento makers and they're mm -hmm. you know millions of views on youtube because mm -hmm. um you know the lunch that they prepare for their for example for their child um but um yeah we haven't talked about much about the bentos but they're a huge part of the kombini and japan in general so we were hoping this week to take a deep dive and look at some of our favorite bentos mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so same thing. We've each picked three. Our top three bento out of the konbini here. And uh, who should we start off with here, Mike? Do you want to uh, bang yeah, into uh, one of these boys? Yeah, let's let's start off with you. I'm going to go with your number three it's here. My number I'm three pull here. It up. That's here right. we go. Number three bento for me is Boom. the oh. fried fish bento. Mm. This is uh, a classic bento item. It's a small strip of white flaky fish that's been oh, yeah. battered and fried, topped with what they call taru taru sasu, which of course mm. is tartar sauce. But then the brilliance of a bento. First, there's some, <laughs> there's bentos have a fixed and flexible principle. Fixed meaning item always appears inside of a bento box, rice. You're almost always going to yes. see rice inside of a yes. bento box. Also, you're always going to see pickles inside mm -hmm. of a bento box. And then you're probably going to see a little side vegetable. In this case, it looks like we got some gobo or burdock mm. root, which is outstanding. Mm. And then the rest is all stuff you can play with. And what they're playing right. with here is a piece of fried white fish, outstanding, taru taru sauce, and that rolled up delicious scrambled egg the classic japanese mm. egg and this one also has a little prize of uh it looks like fried chicken it's got a little karaage there mm. oh yeah a little hidden snack uh it looks like it's tucked behind another fried vegetable there so outstanding mm. but the main dish here is that fried white fish with that taru taru sauce it's absolutely outstanding yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I've had this many a time, and you're right. It is great. And thank you for the the follow up explanation of of yeah, what goes into a bento. You're exactly right. Like 
there are some fixed parts, there's a main part, and then there, everything else is up for, up for grabs and to play with. Um, nice choice. I love this. And like you said, ooh, that, uh, that fried fish with that tadu tadu sauce <laughs> on top of that rice. Ooh, really, really good. All right. I'm going to introduce my first uh, bento here. <laughs> and a little bit different. Here <laughs> oh, we go. We're boy. talking about... Yes. So this one is from uh, Lawson, but the main the main deal here is the Ooh. Hamburg, mm. not hamburger, the Hamburg bento. As you can see, we've got the rice, we got the Hamburg. Mm. On top of that, you're getting some demi glaze sauce, <sighs> and I like this um, Lawson's here. They also have some key ingredients for this uh, the Hamburg one, and that's we got the one carrot, we got the one broccoli, and then mm -hmm. we got that. <laughs> You mentioned before those few strings of spaghetti. So, Matt, what's your call on a uh, Hamburg? Well, this bento. is actually my number one bento, Mike. Oh, uh, no. No. Yeah, this is something we were going to call up in a few segments here. But, no, this is actually my number one bento. <sighs> Couldn't have picked a better one here. That Let's just talk a little bit about Hamburgu. And mm. emphasis on the goo because there's also something called hamburger, mm -hmm. which is a hamburger. That's the traditional burger with the bun. And oh, here yeah. we're talking about something very different. This is hamburger. This mm. is, it's not a hamburger patty. It's not meatloaf. It is the most perfect <laughs> form that ground oh. beef can take. And it's because somehow juice is infused inside mm. of the hambagu patty. Mm. I don't know how this works. I've never been able to actually accomplish it myself, making it at home. Mm -hmm. But when you go out and buy this, it always has this wonderful juiciness, soft texture to it. And then mm. they top it with this rich demi-glaze sauce. Oh. And I was talking to Karen yesterday about this demi glaze sauce. She too mm -hmm. is just a huge fan of this. It's this rich, uh, tasty, unctuous sauce to pair with that juicy hambagu. It's absolutely outstanding. I love this bento. And then, yeah, perfect accompaniment of one floret of bro broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> a single floret of steamed broccoli. Uh, not, I would say that's about an eighth of a carrot, maybe four strings of pasta, eight kernels of corn, and then a giant pile of rice. Oh, yeah. Outstanding. <laughs> oh, man. So we did clash. Um, and actually, when we were talking to this, one thing I thought that's so great about bento is, although you have that huge, uh, that mound of uh, rice, you can be sure that uh, you have the proper balance of ingredients in rice. So when you get to the end, you're not gonna have a bunch of rice left over. You're gonna have, it's almost, you're gonna meet at the end of that rice and the ingredients. Oh man, I, yeah, it, it is great. And okay, so that's your, that's your number one. Wow, okay, okay. That's my number one. All right, so in that case, all right, next, let's go to your number two. Yeah, this, is, this would be my number two that's going to come up here. So this is a Saboro Ooh. Gohan. This here, uh, this is hard to describe. Actually, I still don't know what this is, honestly. <laughs> I know it's chicken, mm -hmm. um, but it's like diced up chicken, diced up scrambled egg, with some diced up vegetables in this mm -hmm. really nice kind of teriyaki sauce. I don't exactly know what it is. It's kind of simmery, all mm. poured on top of rice. There's a big pile of rice that sits under all of those ingredients. And I was introduced to this school lunch when working on the JET program. Oh. Once a month, there was Saboro Gohan. It was my favorite or one of my favorite school lunches. I would just chow down on that thing. And it's an underrated thing, kind of flies under the radar. Um, yeah. Nobody really talks about Saboro Gohan. Mm -hmm. I wanted to put a little spotlight on it here because I think it's, it's outstanding. It's this wonderful combo of diced up stuff simmered in this wonderful sauce, pairs, pairs perfectly with rice. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm a huge fan as well. And like you said, underappreciated because it's it's not the sort of thing that you go out and say like, hey, um, hey I'm going out to eat, let me get some Saboro uh, you know, uh, rice, uh, 
Yeah, no, this is great. Of, of course, you know, our viewers, you know, just to tell you, underneath this layer of, of rice and this meat is, is or, or sorry, of the, the egg and uh, meat is rice. At the bottom, it's, it's all covering rice underneath there. Um, and uh, yeah, nice choice. I, I think this is a great chance to give this, uh, this item uh, its place in the spotlight. All right, so next I'm gonna run to, to my number two. Um, this one, you know, no surprise. I think you're gonna know yeah, what uh, we're absolutely. talking about here. Yeah. We're mm -hmm. talking about the yep. Karage bento, mm -hmm. the fried bento. There she blows. Not really much to say here. Um, <laughs> this one is one of the most stoic uh bentos that you're gonna find mm -hmm. um this really just has the core ingredients we got the rice mm -hmm. with some sesame seeds on top of there oh yeah and then we got in the corner we've got some uh ginger there or some pickles i'm not sure and then we got the main ingredient we got that fried chicken and you know yeah like i said not much to say about this it's just perfect i mean it's great it, it is heavy but um I've had these, uh, I've had uh, karage bento many times in my life. I actually talked myself out of picking this one because <laughs> I wanted to spotlight the underappreciated Saboro Gohan. Mm -hmm. And um, no, this is truly one of the most perfect meals on earth. This is rice paired with juicy pieces of fried chicken here. Mm. And I love that that's all this bento has. Um, this is sort of, uh, if, a, if a, this is a bento that requires training. You know, mm. you have to really distill the bento box down to its yeah. essential elements. And <laughs> what is more essential than white rice and fried chicken? Hard to find something that you need to make this mm -hmm. better. In fact, adding something to it would just make it worse because... Yeah, it is just such a glorious thing. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised off in the background there. I'm like, I see what looks oh, like mayonnaise. Right. I don't, you know, I don't remember it coming with mayonnaise, but actually now that I think about it, sometimes maybe you get this and on top of the, the top cover, they've got a, um, a little sack of a mayonnaise taped on there. So, uh, you know, uh, it's not something I've, I've never, uh, or it's something I've seen before, I feel, uh, now that I think about it. Yeah, a little bit surprising for me. I actually, I like a little squeeze of lemon on my, mm. yeah, on my karage fried chicken there. So, um, yeah, outstanding choice. Wonderful, wonderful pick there. All right. And then coming up to Matt num Matt's number one, as we talked about, it's the, uh, oh, the Hamburg uh, bento. Just give it one more look there. And then coming up to my number one. I'm talking about <laughs> the staple. I mean, this, this, you could almost say that um, it's, it, this is almost like when you say Kleenex and you mean tissue. When you say bento and you, when you say makuno uchi bento and you mean bento. Um, <clears throat> so makuno uchi um, is a term that uh, actually means like, um, so curtain, maku means curtain. And this was a, uh, a bento that was apparently, I looked up the, the, the history of the word, was served in intermissions during No and Kabuki plays back wow. in the Edo period. Wow. And so that's where the name came from. Um, the Makuno Uchi bento is, as you can see, you've got your rice and usually you've got your salmon, mm -hmm. as you can see right here. And then besides that, as Matt so perfectly described when we first started talking. You've got, you're, you're free to play. Um, <laughs> from there on, you have, as you can see, you've got, this looks like some sort of like vegetable stewed dish in the background mm -hmm. there. In the front here, you've got some, um, it looks like steamed vegetables. Mm. You've got a little croquette there. And, um, you know, I just love the, uh, the Makanochi bento. Um, actually, my coworkers, you know, they, they used to say the Maikonochi bento. And <laughs> I, uh, you know, I would, uh, I was known to get a Makanochi bento. Um, yeah, so this is my number one. Although in terms of like pure like flavor, maybe I'd choose another one. But in terms of like what I feel of when I think about bentos, I'm thinking the, uh, the Makanochi bento. No doubt. And again, thanks for bringing the history here, Mike. This is dating back to the Edo period here. 
Mm-hmm. Um, no doubt this is a classic item and uh, also a healthy item. You got uh, a lot of veg and a great piece of fish there. Mm-hmm. I, I began to understand your love of this when we went to Costco together mm. and you picked up the biggest pack of salted salmon I had ever seen in my entire life. It looked like about a month's work. I thought you were about to hole up with a shotgun and a pantry full of beans <laughs> waiting for the end of the world. But I found out that that was just sort of a, uh, it's just how you kind of kick off every day at breakfast with a nice mm-hmm. piece of, no, this is a great, uh, yeah. And um, what could be more, this, you know, just uh, Japan on a plate right there. That really mm-hmm. is Japan on a plate with uh, some gorgeous white rice, nice piece of fish and some stewed veg. Mm. Outstanding bento pick, Mike. Yep. Okay. So we shared our picks, but um, one latecomer actually um, this week, unfortunately, the uh, the Karakuchi commentator, the spicy commentator, is does not have any sweets reviews, but she did give us her choice oh, yeah. for favorite bento. So I'm just gonna give it to you here. Boom. Hers Ooh. is the Nori Ben otherwise known as the seaweed bento. And mm-hmm. the seaweed bento, it's basically the makanochi bento or some other just form of bento, except as you can see, the main ingredient is on top of the rice, you have one mm. slice of nori, which is seaweed laid out there. And a lot of times you got that little squirt of mentaiko there. Um, oh, is that what that is? <laughs> squirt of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or, or sorry, no, is that, you know, I thought like it that, was umeboshi. That's yes, I think you're right. It's umeboshi, the the pickled plum. Um, but uh, yeah, so her call for the best bento is the nori ben. Wow, this looks awesome. So this is this is like a juiced up uh, white fish fried bento because you got that mm-hmm. awesome uh, mm-hmm. square of nori. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, I gotta tell you, Mike, this is wow. I couldn't. Be more thrilled that Mai Mai has introduced this because this is definitely just a leveled up version of that <laughs> shirami fried bento and my yes. mouth is literally watering right now. Right. Wow. Thank you, mm. Mai Mai, for introducing us to this outstanding looking bento box. Yep. All right. So that closes out the bento special. If you ever get to Japan, Make sure you get a bento. And Matt, as you know, one of the best places to enjoy a bento is on the train. You get an eki ben. They call it a station bento. You get one of those. They have so many different varieties. You get one, and on your trip while you're on the train, you have the bento. We should actually do a follow-up maybe next week on eki ben because this is eki ben is yeah. a whole nother level of bento. It's oh, it's yeah. convenient adjacent so I think this is totally appropriate but sure. next week I think we have to do something on eki ben. Actually Karen was pushing for it because the level of bento you see coming out of some train stations is really it's just unreal what they're yeah. pumping out of there. Yeah yeah all right Matt well um oh sorry sorry Oh, no, no. Let's, uh, yeah. Uh, Next up, Mike, as usual. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, we got to head over to to the Gemba or the place where the action happens. And we have something special Mm -hmm. planned for this week, Mike. What do we have on the docket today? Hold on. Uh, (laughs) I'll be back in a second. Oh, hey, hey Matt. Boy. Wow. Um, uh, so yeah, sorry about that. I was just I was just taking a trip over to the Kambini. Um, as you can see, I'm here in front of a family mart. Uh, and I thought, hey, now that we've got this video format, we can actually show people what's actually going in on inside the Kambini. Yeah. So um, let's just kind of uh, give a quick description. So we're in a parking lot at a family yeah. mart. This is one of the premier family marts in all of Japan. Oh, it's yeah. uh, just outstanding look. You can see the full glass walls inviting you inside. We oh, have a couple yeah. of bikes parked out front. Of course, school children oh, yeah. eagerly oh, looking yeah. to pick up some items at the Kanbini and decorative flowers to 
to just uh, really uh, that piece de resistance in front of a convenience store. Can you believe this? And of course, all the adverts promoting all of the stuff that's happening. And wow, I can't believe we haven't mentioned this, the post box as well, which oh, is yeah. always located at the convenient, a handy place to go drop off your mail. Yeah. All right. So uh, Matt, um, hey, we're here. Why don't we just take a trip inside? Um, <laughs> You know, as we've talked before, there's a lot of zones in the Combini, but if there's one, and I hope in the future we can introduce a, a bunch of the different zones, but um, if there's one that you know you and I are very keen about, I'm talking about the hot box. And so I thought, hey, today let's go check out the hot box. So um, yeah, let's go inside. Hey. Oh boy. Wow. So um, the majesty of this. Um, you know, there are some images out there that you just can't fully capture it in words. So I hope people do tune into the YouTube channel here. But this is the checkout counter. And what we're looking at are the Oden soup box. Immediately oh, yeah. behind it, you got the hot box main item list. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, you got the American dog, just the straight up hot dog. You got the Kodoke. You got your fried chickens up top. Mike, those are stacked to the ceiling oh, in yeah. there. They're carrying probably only a couple hours of inventory, actually, believe it or not. <laughs> and then immediately next to it, we got kind of the snack hot box where you got your yakitori. Mm. You got your fried rolls. You got oh, yeah. your, just, uh, you know, you just want a quick bite to eat. Boom. Hop over to that hot box. Boom. Right there. And, and uh, um, yeah, this is what you see at every checkout counter at the Conveni. It is just majestic. Mm, yeah. So I thought, hey, well, let's zoom in a little bit. There's actually one hot box a little bit off the side there. So let me move over there. Boom. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> Glory be. That is the Nikuman hot box. And, oh. you know, a lot of people might be wondering, oh, the image is a little blurry there. What's going on? No, it's just sweating. The Nikuman <laughs> hot box is always sweating because those are some steamed buns and that steam is piping hot and you get a lot of condensation coming down. Don't let mm. that be a turn off. In fact, you want that thing looking like it's just run a marathon somewhere <laughs> around the equator. Just sweating, sweating, sweating. And yeah. uh, look, those things are stacked to the ceiling. Each row is a yeah. different flavor, Mike. And there's your cheese Nikuman. That's only a four cheese Nikuman. Yeah. So I guess this year they've upgraded to five cheese. Mike, what's your favorite inside this hot box here? You know what? Um, I like the cheese Nikuman. We got the, the pizza man at the bottom here. We got the sweet Anaman right here. Mm -hmm. And then, or wait, no, what is that? Is that cheese the, curry? No, man. that's the cheese curry, man. What am I talking about? Ooh. Then we got the classic Nikuman. And then we got my favorite. I'm talking about the premium <laughs> Nikuman right up here. The black label right there. Um, <laughs> that's my favorite. But um, how, how about you, Matt? What's, what's your favorite? I like the Nikuman? classic. I, I yeah. just love that real deal Nikuman, man. I eat two, three of those a day if I could. And Ooh. I'd still want another. But it's oh, yeah. always nice to kind of go off base and grab a cheese curry man, to grab yeah. a pizza man. Actually, the pizza man is truly one it's of the great good. items of all time. Of all time. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So, hey, speaking of, you said something about sweaty. Let's, let's head even to a sweatier place in the hot box section. Boom. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> wow. So a lot of people here, we're at the Oden tank here. And... Yeah. Um, Gosh, in the <laughs> lower right, you got your wieners, you got your goose suji, you got your, you got your stewed daikon, you got your boiled eggs, you got your sacks up top, you got your fried tofu, you got your chikua fish cake, you got your other fish cake, you got your other tofu, and then you got that mystery swill, which, uh, you know, that's, you know, you reach in there and, you know, you just sort of close your eyes and see what comes out. That is a cloudy mess right there, Mike. Mm. Yeah, this is um this is a really nice shot into the abyss of um the swamp of the Oden. And uh, yeah, they've got it jammed to the to, they they're you know, it's packed. Mm. Oh. 
one of my favorite oh the tofu right there oh i love just that tofu oh yeah all right all right so hey heading it to the last and you know i thought boom let's uh let's look at at our Boy. recurring section our sort of banner section we're talking about the chicky wars and what is going on in here oh my goodness we got a um uh, veritable uh this looks like an army division of fami chicky here these beautiful <laughs> soldiers are lined up ready to go to battle uh and they're stacked what how many you probably got about 60 fami chickies in there and yeah. people are probably thinking how long is that going to sit really you're going to pack that thing full of 60 fami jets no that's probably about an hour's worth of inventory right there yeah you no got to continuously fry these things to keep that box stuffed <laughs> Um, this is not something to be afraid of. This is something no. to welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. No, this is, this is exactly where you want to go. We're right next to the register when you're about to check out. Hey, you want anything else? Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, I do. <laughs> so, um, all right. So that's the hot box, everybody. Um, of course, you know, according to Kambini, it's a little bit different, but you know, let me, I don't want to, you know, let me, let me head back out of the Kambini and, um, Just real quick though. I mean, yeah. we just put a ton of items up on screen here and people are probably thinking, well, how much, what's the, what's the footprint of that? That's at the checkout counter. Okay. Ladies oh, and yeah. gentlemen, you're not looking at, you know, a wall of stuff. This is probably maybe six mm. feet of counter space. The yeah. Convini does just an absolutely brilliant job of using small amounts of space to pack in. I'm probably looking at between the Oden tank, the three hot boxes. We probably got, I'm going to say, 60 different items right there. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, um, it's amazing the, uh, the efficiency of, of just including so many items that they don't just, you know, you lose track of them. I mean, they're all attractive, as you can see. Like, if you if you want the the American dog, it's right there. You know where it's gonna be. Um, so, uh, all right, Matt. Well, that was um, the first episode of uh, you know taking the tour of the Kambini. We're gonna try and um, hopefully check out some more zones in the future. So let me come back into the real world. Hey, I'm back. Yeah, and uh, before we step away from the Gemba here, Mike, uh, I had my own trip to a different sort of Gemba yesterday, and uh, right. this was at a local grocery store, kind of a high-end mm -hmm. joint here in Cambridge, and yeah. uh, there was something that I needed to share with the world as sort of a PSA. Mm -hmm. um, there's a liquor store selling a cup sake for $9.99, as you can see here on the shelf. Um, what? Yeah, uh, a cup sake is really the bottom of the barrel of sake in Japan. Uh, of course, they have the fuck you cup, the one cup. <laughs> and these are what, Mike, maybe one or two bucks a pop. At most, yeah. They're really used to close out a bad night. They're not used yeah. to uh, you know, enjoy or share with friends. This is something to really end what's been a oh. bad evening. So you can pass out on your futon and maybe throw up all over yourself in the middle of the night. This is not something that you want to pay nine ninety nine for. I no. almost called uh, Maura Healy when I saw this. She's our AG here in Massachusetts. And uh, just to let the state know that there's uh, <laughs> sort of a criminal enterprise operating on Mass Ave here in Cambridge trying to... Uh. Uh, convince people to spend nine dollars and ninety nine cents on a cup of sake. Yeah, oh so just uh, a warning to those here in Cambridge: do not buy this. This is somebody trying to fool you. <laughs> yeah, this is unbelievable. I've never even heard of Panda Junmai or Panda. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, I would almost be more forgiving if it was the one cup or something. Um, right. Right. Yeah, this is unbelievable. Did it look like um, this was a popular item that people were buying? Like, what was your what what, did, what was your feeling on that? It's hard to say, Mike. Actually, the cup sake has become more popular here in the United States. You see more and more of these, especially at Japanese restaurants. And um, hmm. yeah, uh, as 
we've both said, Japan has a bad problem of marketing their products here in the United States. Yeah. Uh, a good example is this bottle right next to it where it has London, London Sake Challenge right on the cover. Oh, Jesus Christ. Just put some kanji characters on that some bitch and let it ride. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you don't need all this weird stuff like pandas. But no, um, no, I think it is becoming more popular. But at nine ninety nine, I just I don't get it. I don't get it. No, no, this is criminal, and I, I hope that you can alert the proper authorities as you <laughs> as you were mentioning. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Oh my god. All right. Well, um, yeah. So, wow, we're coming close to the end. So, Matt, I, I think you had a, a story for us for some convening news this week. Yeah, I do, Mike. Yeah, we have a follow-up to a story that we shared several months ago. Um, this is the ongoing battle between franchise owners and the big convenie corporations. Of course, mm. uh, there was the hero, warrior, uh, martyr, whatever you want to call him, Mitoshi Matsumoto, a 7-Eleven oh, yeah. franchisee who closed his shop, dared to close his shop on New Year's holiday in defiance of company policy. 7-Eleven then went to battle with this guy, turned off his payment terminal, mm. stopped shipping him items to sell to customers. This guy was left to sell whatever he had in the shop, cash only, because he wanted a day off. Um, mm. And now the F Japanese Federal Trade Commission has uh, started to investigate these business practices by the big convenie. Mm -hmm. And what they're finding out is pretty dramatic. One, a huge percentage of franchisee owners, franchisees get less than 10 days off a year, something Ten like 63% according to a survey. Uh, they're also saying that fr franchisees are forced to buy product even if they can't sell it. And so the big kombini are really just stuffing these wonderful people who own and operate these community centers called kombinis with inventory they can't sell and telling them, no, you can't take a damn day off. We're going to work you till you're dead and stuff your stores till they go broke. So uh, yeah, luckily Japan's uh, trade commission is getting involved and oh, uh, they're, oh, they're demanding change by the big conveni here. So hopefully this will provide some relief eventually to the store owners, but we will see. Goodness gracious, 10 days off a year. That's, I think that, you know, uh, the prime minister of Japan had more days off than, than that. That's absolutely absurd. Yeah. I, you know what, as much, and you know, when we need to, we, uh, we speak up about the, you know, the, the big convenies and, you know, some of their practices and, uh, you know, once again, just got to say they've, they've got to do something cause this is not right. And I'm glad that, uh, the government's getting involved. I'm sad that they had to, you know, it had to come to this point, but, um, you know, that's just no way to force people to buy products, to stay open in only 10 days a year. That's less than one day a month. That is just absurd. So, um, yeah, Matt, I'm glad that we picked this up because this is something that, um, you know, we got to use our platform to project as well as much as possible. Cause, um, you know, if there's one thing we love, it's it's the franchise owners. We love the franchise owners. And I'll even say, I think in a story that featured uh, Mr. Matsumoto, uh, mm -hmm. he mentioned that even on one of his days off, he was at the onsen calling in orders for his convene. So even a day off is not really a day off, sitting butt naked in a hot spring, calling <laughs> in some ikuman <laughs> and canned coffee. Uh, that's how these people spend their days off. And we feature these franchise owners many times doing great things for their communities, um, whether it's on safety or protecting elderly from these financial scams, and then just operating really some of the most brilliant shops on the face of the planet. So um, they need a break and hopefully mm -hmm. they're soon to get one. Yeah, nice call. And um, like you said, this was featured in the New York Times as well. So maybe let's get in some international news. It'll make them move. And um, no, but great story. And thanks for picking this one up.
All right, so uh, that wraps things up for episode 21, Mike. Hard to believe we are around the bend. Um, wow. Uh, we're heading into... Uh, Baker's yeah. Dozen. Whoa, holy moly. Um, so thanks, everybody, for listening and watching. You can now check us out on YouTube to see exactly what we're talking about when we're talking about it. Please, of course, uh, rate our podcast or give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. You can also check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, where we post things that we're talking about. If you have a Conveni memory or a Conveni comment or whatever, uh, give us a call at 617-453-8207. And actually, Mike, I'll call out. We think we're going to be doing a live Q&A for our listeners in the next week or so it's to answer all of your questions about the Conveni. So look yeah. out for that announcement. Uh, otherwise, thanks everybody for listening and Mike, I'll see you at the Conveni. See you at the Conveni.